Hi, I'm Scott Mansell and welcome to Driver 61's University Series. This series is a collection of whiteboard tutorials taking you from the very basics of circuit driving to more advanced techniques later on. Today we're going to be taking a look at the six phases of a corner. Basically, what you need to do as you approach and go through a corner and when to do it. So, if you take a look at the diagram on the right hand side here, you can see a typical right hand corner and the racing line as we come through that corner. We split the diagram up into six sections and we're just going to run through those very quickly before we go into more detail about each phase. Firstly, we have the braking and downshift area, as you can see here in the straight red line. Then we move into phase two, which is the trail braking area, where you'll begin to turn the car in and start to release the brakes. Section three, the blue section here, is where we transition from coming off the brakes to beginning to get back on the accelerator pedal. Phase four, the green section here, is the balanced throttle phase, where we, we're completely, we're turning the car as hard as we can, however, we're not decelerating or accelerating the car. Section five, the longer section here, is where we're increasing the throttle, we open up the steering angle. And finally, section six here is maximum throttle when we're flat out and heading down the next straight towards the next corner. So that's all very simple to understand, but to be a little bit clearer and to understand what we're actually doing with the pedals, we have another diagram just down here. Now this shows what the accelerator pedal is doing and what we're doing with the brake pedal. So this uh, Y axis here shows the brake pressure and the throttle position against the distance as we're coming into and going through the corner here. The green line is the accelerator pedal and the red line is the brake pedal. So you can see we approach the corner with 100% acceleration here and we lift off the accelerator. We're just about in this position on the diagram. Then phase one here, which corresponds to this part on the diagram, we get on the brakes to 100% of the brake pressure in this phase and we're stopping the car in a straight line. Then we head to phase two, which is this section where we're beginning to release that brake pressure coming off the brakes completely as we turn the car into the corner. Phase three, the blue section here and here, is again the transition where we're coming completely off the brakes and beginning to get back onto the accelerator. Then we head to phase four here, the, the small blue section, where we're, we're actually just getting back on the accelerator just to keep the speed in the car. We're not accelerating, but we're just keeping a constant speed. Then we move to section five here. As you can see, the throttle position begins to accelerate up towards 100% throttle. And finally, we have section six, where we're 100% flat out on the accelerator pedal as we're heading down to the next corner. So now we're going to take a look at each phase in more detail, beginning with the braking and downshift section. Now, the majority of the braking is done in a straight line. When a car's in a straight line, you can both decelerate and accelerate with the maximum grip of the tire. As soon as you turn the car, you use some of that grip up for turning, and obviously then you can't decelerate or accelerate as quickly. Now, it's very obvious to say this, but you need to spend as little time braking as possible. If you're not braking at 100% of the tire's grip as you enter a corner, you'll be wasting time, and obviously that isn't what we want. The braking point or the braking reference where you begin the braking is very important. But actually what's more important is, it, is that we arrive at this section here as we begin to turn the car into the corner at the correct speed and the maximum speed that we can actually turn the car into the corner. This affects the pitch of the car, the way that the car is balanced as we're entering. So it's really important that we arrive at the turning point at the correct speed to go through the corner. Another thing that we need to think about when we're braking is that maybe we have to change down one, two, three, even four gears before we get to the corner. If you're in a manual car, it's very important that you do these downshifts as smoothly as possible. If you don't do them smoothly, it could be that you upset the rear or the, the front of the car, whichever is the driven uh, axle, and it can unsettle and, uh, and decrease your ability to slow the car down. 
Phase two is where we trail the brakes into the corner. Now this is an advanced technique which we have another article on that you can take a look at and I'll link to below. If you're a beginner, I stress, don't try to do this when you're on your track day. It's a difficult technique to get right. But basically, as you're beginning to turn the car into the corner, you can continue to decelerate the car, but not as much as when the car's in a straight line. As soon as you turn the car, you're using some of the tires grip to turn laterally, and you can't use it to brake as much as you're entering the corner. Now, if you're a beginner, I would advise just brake as hard as you can in a straight line, and then just before you begin turning the car into the corner, come off the brakes as smoothly as you possibly can. So next up we have phase three, which is the transition from coming off the brakes to then getting back on the accelerator. Now this is a very tricky part and beginners tend to be too rough in both coming off the brakes and then getting back on the accelerator. To do it perfectly, as you can see on the graph here, we need to not be able to feel this movement in the car. So if you feel that you're coming into the corner and you feel the front of the car pop up as you come off the brakes, then you've done it too roughly. And the same with the accelerator. If you feel a kick in your bum as you get on the accelerator, then it's, you've got on it too hard. So this is really, really important because if you're not smooth enough and you feel these movements, then it's possible that you could carry a little bit more speed into the corner. Now the best thing to do to improve your transition from the brakes to the accelerator is to practice in a road car. That way you can get lots of repetition and be ready for when you go on the circuit. So when you're slowing your car down in traffic and then you have to come off the brakes, try to do it as smoothly as possible and you're trying not to feel the front pop up like this. It's quite easy to do but it takes a little bit of time to get used to it and improve that muscle memory. The same when you get back on the accelerator pedal. Try to bring the accelerator in so that the car squats down smoothly and you don't feel a kick. It just wants to be as silky smooth as you possibly can make it. So by stage four, you can see here, we're back on the accelerator and the car is turning the maximum amount that it can do as you bring it in towards the apex. Now at this point, we're not trying to accelerate the car even though we're back on the accelerator. We're just trying to maintain a constant speed. So we're bringing the car back in and it may be that we only have 10 or 15% throttle just for this little while while we re-engage the engine, we get the car to settle again before then we move to stage five where we begin to get back on the accelerator. So back into stage five here, if I just move across, the car is still turning. However, the steering is beginning to open up as you exit the corner. Now, the thing is, as you open up the radius of the corner, you'll be able to accelerate more. If you imagine two roundabouts, one is very small and you have lots of steering angle in and you can only go around it at 20 miles an hour before you brake traction. If you imagine a larger roundabout that we go around with this much steering angle in and it has a bigger radius, we might be able to go around at 40 miles an hour. So you imagine that you're opening up the steering as you're coming out of the corner this means that you can actually accelerate more as you're opening up the steering angle. A simple way to remember this is to imagine a piece of wire going from the top of the steering wheel to the accelerator pedal and as you open up the steering it allows you to get more on the accelerator as you bring the steering towards a straight line. So finally we move on to stage six which is a relatively simple part. Basically we're just going from the increasing throttle to being flat out on the accelerator. The trick and the feel is to be able to know when to get flat out on the accelerator without breaking the traction. Now, it will depend on the grip or the power of your car. If you have less grip, you're gonna to have to wait. And it's similar if you have uh, lots of power, you're gonna to have to wait a little bit longer before you get flat out on the accelerator. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, please get in touch. Don't forget to download the single page cheat sheet so you can learn this technique as quickly as possible. Thank you very much and goodbye.